everyone. Thanks for joining. Today we're taking a look at the Manjo Pack for network devices as part of the VMware vRealize True Visibility Suite. Uh, so we're going to start here in the documentation. A couple of things to uh, call out quickly here. Uh, first of all is, is uh, the system requirements. Uh, there aren't really specific system requirements since we could uh, add any, any device here that has uh, SNMP enabled on it. So we, we're looking at uh, either the advanced or enterprise versions of vRealize operations. Uh, and it, as long as we have uh, SNMP uh, V2C or V3, uh, we will be okay there. Uh, we need our, our read-only community string on uh, V2C uh, or our username password on, on V3, and that depends on, uh, depending on auth, uh, auth or privacy, uh, depending on what we want to do there. Uh, just real quick here, uh, we'll go through. It, the, using the Mandro Pack section, I think, is uh, very important as we, it shows off our uh, the resource kinds of relationships, uh, depending on, on what uh, device we're using there. Uh, we also have a list of dashboards we can go through. We're gonna, actually going to use those uh, or jump into those uh, in Vero's operations. We won't go those, uh, look at those here. Uh, we can also look at the views, reports, alerts, and metrics that are coming out there. So let's go ahead and jump in real quick. Once we have the management pack uh, installed, we can go to add account, find our networking devices management pack, uh, once we've uh, got here, we can then imp input our uh, name or description, uh, the management IP. Of course, we can also uh, input a comma-separated list here uh, of either IP addresses or host names of the devices we actually want to collect. Uh, and then we input our credential. Again, if we wanted to use our S uh, SNMP v2c, we just need our, our uh, enter a name and then the community string. Uh, if we wanted to uh, go with v3, well, we, didn't, we can use... Uh, no auth, no priv, uh, and then we just get uh, the uh, user uh, or uh, all the way up, uh, and then we can input our auth uh, password, our auth type, uh, so we can choose our auth type uh, there or our privacy type as well uh, and password, so we can go either way. So let's go ahead and jump into our dashboards here. Uh, when they pop up, I usually like to start uh, most general down to most specific. Uh, so I usually start at the uh, overview section. Here we are. Uh, so we, we're going to show here uh, heat maps on, on health uh, of all of our various uh, pieces we've added in here. Uh, we do have a, a few uh, different uh, devices we've added in. So a lot of these are going to be uh, Cisco switches. Uh, of course, we can use our Cisco networking management pack as well. Uh, but we also do add it in uh, some Lenovo switches. I believe some uh, Dell switches as well. Uh, so we can see... Uh, the total health of all of our devices. Uh, we can look at our uptime, how long each of these uh, devices have been up. Uh, we can then also look through at our capacities. So we're looking through at, uh, or throughput, I'm sorry. Uh, so we're looking at, at throughput. Uh, we can look at uh, all of that for each of our uh, various uh, devices here. From there, I usually like to jump into then uh, the health investigation dashboards. Uh, this is going to show that uh, kind of we call it the Skittles view. So we're going to see all of our devices we've added. We've got 10 devices added. Uh, we've got all of our uh, different interfaces that go along. Uh, it, we can then connect them to each of our host system uh, or virtual machines, uh, depending on relationships we have going through there. Uh, so we choose a particular device. We can see those the device here, as well as if it's connected to any other uh, devices we have. So we picked one of our uh, Cisco switches. This is an MDS 9000. Uh, but uh, now we can see all of the devices then that are also related as well as the host system and, and uh, that, that's connected to this MDS. And if we there was any alerts for this particular device, we'd see those here uh, as well as we can see uh, the health of each of those as we go through. Uh, from here, we can go ahead and look at uh, directly at that uh, alert dashboard. Looks like there weren't any alerts uh, on that particular uh, device. Uh, but if we pick uh, here, we've got uh, something on a different uh, Cisco switch. We can see uh, if we choose that that particular alert, we can see we've got uh, a throughput uh, alert there. And so we can see all of the different ports here. If we look on our uh, relationship, uh, we can see all the different the uh, interfaces here. We can also see a couple of different switches that might be uh, also connected here to this uh, particular switch we're looking at. Uh, there's that 9000 we looked at earlier. Uh, if we wanted to, we can always go and, and say, all right, what, uh, what is this alert uh, about? What's uh, going on with it that we need to take a look at? Uh, so it looks like uh, the uh, throughput total uh, or out, uh, outbound throughput total was above our dynamic threshold. 
and we can always look into that uh, and, and see uh, what's going on with that particular threshold and if there's any other alerts or any other metrics that might have uh, uh, kind of been related to that as well. Going back to our dashboards, uh, once we're, we're kind of looking through at all our alerts, now we can look at our performance of our devices. So we're going to look at the networking devices performance. And again, we can see then if we look through uh, all of our various uh, switches we have, uh, we can uh, choose one of those as, if we'd like to look a little further. Uh, and then we can see our top 10 lists as well. Uh, we can So we can see our uh, by throughput capacity, uh, our inbound or outbound. We look at that by uh, packets as well. So we can see which of our switches uh, we've got connected here is using uh, uh, utilizing the most traffic or using the most traffic here. Uh, the last dashboard we want to look at then is just the uh, troubleshooting uh, section. So we can again select our device. Let's go ahead and maybe let's look at that uh, uh, Lenovo switch this time. So we can look at our uh, Lenovo and then again see all of our uh, various uh, interfaces that are there on that uh, particular device and see so it kind of a little bit around how it's, it's performing. Of course if we wanted to uh, look any further into any of the metrics, we could always uh, search for this particular uh, device uh, and go directly to its uh, page from there to see what uh, what's going on with it. So once we've searched for our Lenovo switch here, we've, we've already got it searched, we can then uh, look and see uh, we've got our object plus uh, the interfaces there. Uh, so we can uh, go back and forth between the interfaces and the object itself. We get a little information here around the performance of that uh, particular device. We can always go and, and search individual metrics as well, uh, either for this particular device, uh, we can look at the properties of the device, or we could expand out and look at each of our interfaces as well, uh, choose an interface, and then we get the metrics on that particular interface rather than uh, just the device itself. So once we've added multiple manager packs into our cluster, we can move from a view like this, looking at our VM, data store, and host, to something more like this. We can see that the same virtual machine is still the focal point, but off of the data store we can now see the three-part virtual volume and the common provisioning group it's a part of. We can see the SQL Server instance, we see the databases within that instance, all of the queries, the SQL jobs, and the wait types. We can also see the Cisco Nexus switch, uh, as well as the ports that are on that switch. We can take a look at our F5 Big IP load balancer. We can look at our IIS web server, application pools, websites, applications, and virtual directories. On the left side of our virtual machine, we can see not only the host, but the Cisco UCS blade, the fabric interconnects, and even the chassis itself. Once we have dashboards that can help us with the relationships within our stack, we can start to build out some custom dashboards that can help out with troubleshooting or allow us to be more proactive in our approach. We can correlate our data and use this information to visualize the stack from applications down through the compute layer, the networking layer, and down into the physical storage we're utilizing.